Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Another car chat. Please pretend to be surprised. It's our Please Wednesday. Clap. Yay. It's our Wednesday car chat. And Ben and I are alone today. No Chris. I left Chris at home. Left him at home with his gammy. We abandoned him. We abandoned them. He's watching the dog with mom. And oh, because Lenora is up visiting and we're excited and very happy to see her because we love her. We love her a lot. So any day she shows up at our doorstep is a happy day. It just is. She took um, Ben today to do something unusual. She took you to um, scene 75. Scene 75, which is like an arcade, right? It's essentially one of those entertainment complexes. It does feature an arcade, but it also features additional types of entertainment, such as, let's say, you could host your birthday parties in special rooms there. They also have they also have bars and restaurants there if you're interested. It's a Tunnel Crossing Mall. Yep. Anyway, so the reason she took him there is because Chris's day program went there to have a fun outing for today. So Ben and Lenora just showed up and said, surprise. What did they say when you showed up? Were they excited to see you? I think some of them were actually quite surprised. And guess what else? What? I think I gave some of them PTSD because I rammed them pretty hard on these spin zone bumper cars. Oh no. <sighs> but Ben used to go to that program but decided it wasn't for him. So he still knows a lot of the people that go there, don't you, Ben? Yeah. And then we just saw them all at the Christmas program, too. So there you have it. So I might not be in the program, but have I really, truly left? Yes, yes, you have. If you know what I mean. I'm Back off. I am. Thank you. I'm essentially like a specter. I show up whenever. He's a specter. A specter spectator. He's a weirdo. What are you digging for? I'm just making sure that one of these cans here doesn't have a tab. You, will you I do stop point doing that? You're not even pointing at me. <laughs> okay. I'll joke around about that aside. I do plan on putting those in my recycle bag. Oh, did we tell you that we recycle our cans? Of course. Because you should. Actually, Ben's the only one that really makes cans. Mom drinks a can of pop a day, pretty much. Um, I don't hardly drink any at all, do I, Ben? Mm, you don't really drink much of anything that comes in a can. Yeah, I just Okay, do it. maybe the occasional V8 when the mood strikes you. I like V8. Yeah, I have to be in the mood for it, though. You have to have your head slapped enough so you would say could have had a V8 for it. Nah, it's just my body can't handle nutrition. Ah! And Chris, we hardly ever buy Chris pop because he doesn't need it. It's he's not the healthiest person in the world and he does not need a cola habit on top of it. And he's trying to lose weight anyway, so he's on a diet. No, he's trying to change his eating habits. That's to kind changing. of a diet. No, because a diet is like counting calories specifically to lose weight or fat or whatever. But what he's trying to do is change his portion control and change, you know, how he looks at food and make healthier choices, which is more of a lifestyle change than a diet. Uh, that's what they called it in the old world, huh? Nope, it's just what it is. Anyway, he's needing to lose some more weight too, so he doesn't need a cola habit, and he would have one too. That kid could have a pop habit if, if you gave him half a chance. You give Chris a 12 pack of something like Pib Extra, don't expect that thing to last more than a couple days tops. Seriously, I'm sitting here calling him a kid. Do you know how old your brother is? At least two years older than me. He's going to be 34 in June. And yet, he's still a kid. Because let's face it. Adulting sucks. If we could, we'd probably regress our ages down to smaller ones, but then we wouldn't be able to ram each other in the spin zone, now would we? Just kids. They're kids. My kids. My kids are always going to be kids to me. They'll be 70 and I'll be going, them kids is just nothing but trouble. So, 
What you can do. And perhaps zombie bowling, which she would probably be ranting and raving about, would end up being another one of her hot topics. You never know. I plan on being a crotchety little old lady. I've already practiced them, can you tell? Do your zombie bowling skit as crotchety old lady. I don't do a zombie bowling skit. You remember when I told you about that game for the 3DS known as Undead Bowling? Yeah, but I don't remember doing anything about it. Ben Be thinks I'm a stand-up comic. Go ahead. Basically, for those uninitiated, the game Undead Bowling basically has you take control of an unseen person. It's implied that the player is the one chucking big metal balls, like bowling balls, at an incoming horde of zombies that have basically been caught by this one guy who used to run a bowling alley. And he's basically using them as a replacement for the bowling pins because apparently they don't make those anymore because the world got dead. I don't remember ever doing anything about that. And basically, you just have a, you just have a couple win conditions, which are basically score as much as possible you know, by killing as many zombies, by running them over with the bowling ball, which you are also able to control with your mind. And guess what else? Well, there goes the police. They're going to pull that guy over. Somebody's getting a ticket. You know what else you got to remember to do? What? Don't let the zombies bite you when you're bowling at them. I think I could remember that. Ooh, we were going by the motel there behind the warehouse here the warehouse restaurant here in Delaware and there were a bunch of police cars out and around and we were trying to figure out what they would be doing there but I thought of another one while you were in the store Ben you know maybe the office got robbed yeah they usually send two cop cars in whenever something like that tends to happen it's more than that if it's something more dire such as a kidnapping or trafficking or whatnot well, to be perfectly honest, I didn't even know it was open. I don't know why I had the idea that it was only open seasonally around the time of the fair. Just me. That motel, huh? Yep. It used to be the L&K back in the day. Now, how long ago was that, people? That was a hot minute ago. Mom, crotchety lady tones. No, thank you. This is not crotchety. This is just, damn, I'm old. Just... It's Play your part. No, I'm not going to do it. Do it. Nope. I anyway, insist. I don't care. Do it. Benny, stop. Anyway, mm. we were wondering why in the world the cops were there. And I would still like to know. It'll probably be on the web later, so I'll check it out. Not that you guys care, but it was interesting to us. So, anyway, the whole thing that started this entire conversation is Chris is at home with Mom because Lenora is here and Lenora is scared of Wolfie and mom can't control Wolfie all by herself. So Chris is home to help her. Now, Wolfie is rambunctious. He is, if he was a kid, you'd say he had ADHD, but- That pup has ADHD, confirmed. Yeah, a little bit probably, but he loves to bounce and jump and trounce people and Prance and do all sorts of big exuberant things, right, Ben? Right. Were we his first owner? No. I wouldn't put it past his first owner to have given him some of this, and it still hasn't left his system. No, his first people abandoned him. They left him tied up to a street sign outside of our library, and he was there overnight before somebody reported him. He was tied up there with no food or water and just abandoned. That makes me so upset and mad when I think about it. But I keep telling myself that then he went to the pound and he got to come home with us, which is where he's clearly supposed to be. So it all worked out okay in the end, but I just feel so bad for that little puppy left abandoned like that. Oh, I can't talk about it. But anyway, so Lenora is just a little bit scared of dogs. The bigger the dog, the more likely she is to be scared of it. And she definitely doesn't like a bouncy dog, does she, Ben? Nope. I think we actually need one of those products from one of those parody shows called Oops, I Crap My Pants. Well, if, don't be like that. <laughs> all but, joking yeah, around aside. She's scared of Wolfie. Oh, I'll, my gosh. She was sitting 
down last night and her foot hit his big walrus that he loves so much. And she thought that it was him and she just screamed and come about this far off the seat of the chair. She was having a heart attack. I'm actually surprised I didn't hear the subsequent sound of a head hitting the ceiling. I'm telling you. And she's gonna probably watch this video later so she'll know that I told on her. I shouldn't have laughed, but it was pretty funny. She She's ratting herself out, Lenora. Oh. You can beat her later. Beat me later. Lenora's supposed to take us Saturday, probably, to go microwave shopping. And I am so torn. Part of me wants to go to the Walmart or the Ollie's and find the cheapest microwave I can find and just buy it. Just, you know, dirt cheap, whatever. But part of me wants to spend extra and get a nice microwave that'll maybe last a little longer because this one only lasted for two years. And that's not very long, honestly, for a microwave. The microwave uh, always might end up being a nice one anyway. I guess we'll see. Well, I just have to see what comes up because yeah. after all, as for our current one, it got dead. It still works, but we have to unplug it between uses and the right side of it gets hot. Also, I'm afraid that the microwaves are leaking out and nuking me <laughs> while we're cooking. So Is that why there's a little bit of melty right about there? I'm hey. well done with it. I'm well done. I'm fricasseed. But no, I need a new microwave. So that's what we're going to be doing this weekend is microwave shopping. Bye-bye, freestanding funds. What are you going to do? You gotta have what you gotta have. Personally, if I didn't have a microwave for my own personal use, it would be a pain in the butt every now and then, but it wouldn't be any big deal, you know? It'd just mean using the stovetop more. But as most of you already know, Chris and Ben are both legally blind, right? Back off Right. People. They're both legally blind, and it's pretty common amongst people who have visual impairments. impairments to have a fear of getting burnt on a stove. They tried their best to coax them out of that when they went to the school for the blind in Columbus, but Chris really can't stand it. It scares him to death. He, he would starve to death. So he does all his cooking in the microwave. If it can't go in the microwave, he don't eat it, right Ben? I am actually surprised that he Actually, I think he actually regressed even further. Now, he won't even touch it if it doesn't have microwave directions. So then Ben, he'll bake stuff. He's a little wussy about it, but he'll bake stuff. And uh, he does a good job, but he won't use the stove top at all. So what are you going to do? Yeah, I barely got past the thing long enough to just stick something into the oven. And then I just leave it. I just leave it up to the door to push it the rest of the way in. And since I'm not there and available to cook for them 24-7, they sometimes have to cook for themselves, which means we need a microwave. That was kind of a long story for a short end, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah. we're about 13 minutes 36 in, and we just hit the, and we just hit part of our way home. I know. I was getting ready to finish up. So, anyway, that's my long my long story about the microwave. We love Lenora and we're so glad she's here to visit us. And I'll let you know Friday what we decide to do. And I'll try not to get killed getting on the highway. Okay, love you guys so much and thank you for watching. And don't forget to share this video so that other people can find my channel. And we will talk to you on Friday. Bye-bye. And I'll try to keep the video just where it needs to be.